all the files that are under you as a minister. They want you to understand that government is made of institutions. An institution each individual have a mandate and a terms of reference. And as I said, this fertilizer came into Gambia in 2009 mm. under the of the Yaya Jam. Then the fertilizer was given to the GGC. So the GGC is the one who was in custody of this fertilizer. And you will find from the records that I'm going to give to you the letter written by GGC in 2016 to the Minister of Agriculture that they need to use their stores and government should do everything possible to get rid of the fertilizer, the managing diet of the GGC road. And in follow-up, that is why when they set up the process of how to discard of the fertilizer, long before I sat in this office. You talked about consulting you said you've consulted your lawyers and considering taking necessary steps. What steps are you taking? To court. For them to prove that I have benefited financially from it. What would you be seeing in the defamation? Ah, defamation. Uh -huh. yes. Come yeah. on, man. Hello, Hello. Minister. My name is Abu Bakar Sedikan. I am a freelance journalist <coughs> and a program uncle at Star FM Radio. Uh, All right. Yes, I, I've, I have listened to your to your deliberations, and it is quite clear. Um, but my question to you is only going to be one question: Is um, uh, these are serious allegations yes. with, with regards to your personality. personality. Yeah. Um, and you have right to go to court and then clear the air. Yes, but um, don't you think with your experience in politics and the office that you are currently occupying, don't you think it is better for you to resolve this matter alternatively than to go to court? Because the president has been informed and there are... I am, I'm not quoting you. I'm ready to lose my job. I didn't look for minister. I never thought I'd come back to him as a minister in the 22 years that I've been thrown in prison in and out. I was ready to make the ultimate sacrifice for my country. Mm -hmm. That's why I stayed. When everybody ran away, I am ready to lose my job to get to the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. I have a family. Mm -hmm. And I think it's enough now for me to be going through treasures and these problems. There is so much of stress within my family, both abroad and in Gambia. Mm -hmm. And my friends, this is not right. I have been one of the most open politicians mm -hmm. to the press in Gambia. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Why can't they not come and contact me? <clears throat> I have not run away. I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. I follow up, but the president has powers to ask you to drop it. If, you can if the president asks me to drop it, I refuse. Hey, all of you, Mune. Do you want to Thank you very much. Can we speak okay. one question at a time? Omar. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Omar Ba from the Standard newspaper. Uh, Honorable Minister, um, the report that was published by the by the Gilfat Network actually threw out, quoted a report that is an investigation done by by the um, SIS and some military agents at the at the state house and which actually the, the, the alleged the president have have approved. Uh, I just want to know um, what about if it comes to the fact that the president actually approved that report and it was authenticated by the SIS and the and the and, and the military and the and the intelligence military at the state house. What will be your response? I will I will resign my job but I will take make sure I take them to court for them to prove what they have alleged that I've done. Because I know that I have not done anything. I am not part of it. They can have their own problems. We know Gambians. Sometimes people don't like my face. Sometimes people don't like the way I behave. Sometimes people don't like my uncompromising stance. That's their business. But what I'm saying is, the courts have to claim. Because even if the IC says, I have been involved. They came only once to my office. And they didn't ask me any question. How can they know how involved I was? When there is no signatory of mine on any document, there is none in any of the documents where my name was involved that I participated in the process. How can they achieve? How can they accomplish such a conclusion? 
you have said uh, earlier on, Kepuatu has not explored any measure to verify the information given to them before they publish. And we've heard from Kepuatu representatives that they have reached out to select people, which you have, or which, or, for instance, the, the, a report, they are relying on reports from the NIA, SIS current report, and the president. So, have you not been betrayed by somebody who they have reached to, who should relate the information to you? That's why I said, if there is betrayal, there is treachery. The only place to resolve this in the courts. Wait for me. If the president appointed me and mandated ISIS under his preview to come and investigate my minister, if he has from the report and he read it and he is convinced that the IS are, are, uh, is, a, is a factual report, why is stopping him from removing me as minister? Why should it, I, OJ, as the minister, hear it from somewhere else? Well, that's why I said, let them bring the report to the courthouse. <coughs> Simple. Can I, can I? Well, you say you have never, they have never explored to verify, and they have, they have said they have contacted somebody next to you. That person has never really given the information to you. They have contacted the somebody next to me? Yes, by email. Yes. They made the same mention of me. Who? Can I respond? Yes. Can I respond? Yes. Um, I was contacted um, the day the story was published. <coughs> When it has already been published? Be before it was published, two or three hours before it was published. Mm -hmm. I was sent an email by Mr. Fadal. And um, my response to him was, these were last year's allegations. I have heard of these allegations to an invest investigating journalist, but the story was never published. I did not even give him appro approval to quote me. And I have also asked, I have also told him not to publish the story, I think that was exactly what I told. The question is, and, and, and really? because there are consequences if you publish a story without proof. Mm -hmm. These allegations have no proof. Kerfado should, if they have proof, they should have published the story with their proof. With their report? Yes, exactly. with their proof. These are, you cannot publish a story without an allegations without proof, without any evidence. That is what we are dealing with here. Can I ask one more wait, wait. If there is a said report, if there is a said report, wait, wait. No, you have to. It's fine. It's fine. I want to make your statement and be responsible. If there are allegations, if there, if the said report exists, that that is their evidence. Let them bring forth the evidence. If if they publish a story based on hearsay. Without an evidence, we have every right. The honorable minister have every right to clear his name. Mm -hmm. Now that they said there is a said report uh, at the um, attorney general's office, the attorney general will review the said report and do what's right. No, so I want to just add to this that then the attorney general has a right. If they are the people who gave these people the report, when these people are going to court, let them give him a copy of the report mm -hmm. from the court. Mm -hmm and clear themselves. It's as simple as that. Because me as minister, I have never been involved in the process. So I want to see the investigators who have not asked me one question, how they arrived to the fact that I am guilty of something that transpired from 2009 to 2014. That's why I want to. Okay. 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 Yes. Okay. 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 Regime where you were one time part of that. Uh, yes, that there were uh, uh, some of such things normally used to happen by them. I see. Yeah. What's your take on that? Thank you very much for coming with this. I was one of the few fortunate Gambians to be the youngest minister ever in Gambian history. And I served for 14 years. And my government existed for 29 years. And when the coup took place, you can remember. Lieutenant Colonel Yaya Jamme saying we rampant corruption. Fortunately, they set up four commissions of inquiries. And the commission of inquiry were 
Sadauda and all his ministers went before was the Bamfo Commission. Degree number 11 established the Bamfo Commission. And it said the commission will sit in public and the report will be made public. I would like you people to go to the archives of the observer at the point. All the other three commissions made their report public up to today. That is the only commission that has never ever published their report. And that was the commission that's why that's what I have confirmed. Yeah, yeah James claim that there was rampant corruption in this country. Anybody who talks about rampant corruption in PPP, you are just talking out of the docks. It's not true. Let the commission report come out. And so, where Sir Daura, myself, and all other ministers were corrupt. They called us to this commission for 11 months. I challenged the commission, and they arrested me, and I was being taken to the mile two. Every morning, they called bring me from mile two to the commission. Because I refused to accept my rights to be violated because they thought they can do anything or any time. I refused. And now I'm saying, anybody who's interested, I think the most important commission that sat in this country was the Bamfo Commission. Because Sir Dauda and all the ministers went before that commission. And the degree number 11 that established it said, the commission will sit in public and will be made the report public up to today. Not any Gambia, except the four members of the AFPRC saw that report. So if anybody is accused of corruption, you lie. Hey. Why, uh, what I will respect authority and rule of law and process. If the presence of his instituted an investigation, then you want to investigate, you send for ISIS. For Nani Sudeman, responsible leader. The more hard, then you know, guy prepare a report, Lila in the report, with the phone, and the con report, Bobu, one item come in. But I can't do it because it was the president of Inga Hamlet, no one guy, no investigate agriculture and other institutions. They went throughout the whole country on this investigation. Lady Sudan, you them, they better investigation. Begis Lee, what I guess, design a leader, what I am. Gisne, um, thank you very much. I'm grateful for this opportunity again. Um, you said, Honorable, that the NEA proposed that the fertilizer should be tested in Dakar, and that was in 2016. It does not during my time. I became minister 2017. When it was disposed. No, wait. I'm coming. So they said, already the government of the day at that time, with their officers, have already known that the fertilizer is not good. Why should we spend money in order to see fertilizer that were in the stores from 2009? The ingredients are expired. They can never be used again. Just to get rid of this fertilizer would have cost us millions of dollars. 
and everybody knew the expert knew that's why they didn't do it they knew that it's not correct that's why they has toxic substance which could harm people and the environment i'm coming now you are the custodian of farmers in this country now you found it okay a month into your office or two that this fertilizer and you are supposed to be in control of your ministry has been discharged by your officials under your watch they took it to senegal because i have evidence of it and let me let me read something to you uh, about an echo, what an ECOWAS protocol says about this because the Gambia government is currently in contravention of an ECOWAS protocol, okay. a treaty that is binding on Gambia, Sorry. which states that member states undertake individually and collectively to take every appropriate step to prohibit the importation, transiting, dumping and bearing of acidities and toxic substances in their respective territories. Thank you very Gambia much. Gambia government violated an they ECOWAS don't. treaty they that didn't. is binding on them. They didn't. Uh, in nature, uh, by let the nature of the disposal of the fertilizer. Fortunately, fertilizers that have lost their potential can be reactivated. Fortunately, it's only Senegal and Mauritania and Ivory Coast that has it in West Africa. That is why the Senegalese were buying it taking it to activate the ingredients in the fertilizer so that they can use it for other purposes. That's why the Senegalese authorities were allowing them to go. The only person who was arrested was the one taking it to Mauritania, not the one going to Senegal. So many trucks have gone to Senegal. Can I interrupt you? No, no, please. No, no, please. No, Where you are talking, I don't interrupt you. I don't interrupt you. So the active, to, to the active gate, the fertilizer is only Senegal, Mauritania, and Ghana that has that um, uh, capacity to do it. That is why. And when they arrested the Mauritania, the Mauritania ambassador intervened, and the man was arrived. The man was released. No, I, I want to. No, no it's a follow. Up. It's a follow. Up. The, the Mauritanian, I, uh, based on the information I have, because I just met Mr. Diba, the, uh, the gentleman who was uh, given the contract to dispose the fertilizer, and I want to ascertain that Mr. Diba's responsibility is selling coos and mess, coos and mess at Sandika. I met him this morning. Now. Your ministry found it okay to contract someone who is selling coos and mess, disposal, not reactivate, the language is disposal, of a fertilizer in Senegal. And the ministry has no monitoring mechanism to confirm how this fertilizer is used in Dakar. That is a sovereignty problem. What we have agreed in Gambia is the fertilizer is toxic, and it can be hazardous to human beings and animals. Mm -hmm. So let us get rid of it. And in the contract, you will get a copy. They have not informed. The only condition they gave to him that one bag of this fertilizer should not be sold in Gambia. If he does and he is arrested, they will, they will deal with it. Because we know Gambia does not have the means to reactivate the fertilizer. And then it is not our responsibility. There are so many business people who are doing business between Gambia and Senegal, between Gambia and other countries. Who are we to dictate? How many who sellers are now doing other businesses in Gambia here? If I am only a bitiki man, does it mean I, I cannot sell bread? Selling bread does it mean I cannot sell a bag of rice? I don't think we should try to uh, computerize people's activities. In, that's not fair. What I'm saying is, the fertilizer should be got rid of. If not, it will affect human beings and animals. And if the government wanted to get rid of it, they will spend millions and millions to do it. Now, if they have people who can assure them that they can get rid of it and not sell anything Gambia, but the countries that can reactivate the fertilizer, who are we to stop them? 
uh, Honorable Minister, yes. clearly there is a report, a report that the presidency is aware of. The presidency is telling us that this report is at the AG's chambers, they are waiting for advice. And there is a lot of talk surrounding this issue and the president or the presidency hasn't spoken to you about this issue. Uh, do you feel betrayed by the president? No. You know, me, I see myself as a human being. And God has never created a perfect human being. We all make mistakes. And through our imperfections, that is why even human beings have never done a perfect thing. There is no perfect system. There is no perfect government. There is no perfect family. There is no perfect human being. I will not feel betrayed by it. What I'm saying is, let the report be published for the whole Gambia to consume. And if any of us found ourselves wanting, either the president has a right to sack us or we, re we all resign our jobs. Simple. But for me, I have not yet had this report has been... I have seen from when I was in China, from the president's uh, press officer, saying that the report is now ready and uh, it is with the Attorney General's chambers. Yes, I'm waiting. Let the Attorney General's chambers make their decision and then let us be contacted. If they make a decision that OJ was found liable, let them prove it. But you work under him, so it's only fair that he, he talks to you about it. But I said that in my first statement when I was here. But I said people make mistakes. So and the must president is no mistake. exception. Okay. Okay. I said there is no problem with my thing. I can only take two more questions. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'll th th thank you. Thank you very much for entertaining a lot of questions. I think the most important thing is to clear it out of the topic. I have two questions to ask. Um, considering the toxic nature of this fertilizer, and still there are stores that are storing this fertilizer, they're still harmful to both human and animal. How soon can we get rid of this fertilizer? and make sure that you know we live in a safe country. We are facing with a lot of environmental challenges. And if you try to dump this thing in any community, you will face another resistance. So I'm just my worry is how soon are we seeing that these uh, toxic fertilizers are disposed? That because you are talking about government um, spending millions of uh, uh, dollars just to dispose this fertilizer. Okay. Because so much, 9,500 tons. That's about how many thousand of bucks? Probably 50,000 or so. That's what I'm saying. I said, the whole vision of the people who started the process in 2014, up to 2016, was to get rid of this fertilizer so that we don't harm Gambia. And I think the best way was if we can get it out of this country, because we don't have the millions to destroy it. Now, if they go into partnership or into contact with a businessman, who can take it somewhere where it can be made useful? Why are we stopping it? That's my question. Please, please let me let me no, no, let no, me no, ask no, 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 you. Ask too many questions. This, this is important. This is very important. This is very important. This is very important. Please, this is very important. It's a follow. It's a follow. This is a follow. Yes, Honorable uh, Minister, last question from my side. <laughs> you were not in office when the, team, uh, when the report, when the contract was given. You were not informed by the right people. With regards to your experience, don't you see this is a kind of a conspiracy around your ministry? Do you agree? I agree with you that there is a conspiracy, not around my ministry, but around OJ. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, you know. I am a politician all and out, and I will always ever be a politician, in respect of what. i just give you an example. I went to America with the first lady, with all the ambassadors, and they make a nice banquet, and we are enjoying ourselves. But they came only and sold all the dancing and tell me everything in the world that you can think of. When the first lady was dancing next to me, the ambassador in London, Washington and New York, Tangara and others were dancing with me. Ministers were dancing with me. But why just OJ? When, that's why I was happy. When they asked me, I said, up to today, today when I'm talking to you, I go to nightclubs. Everybody knows that inside the country. I don't care. I said, if Nelson Mandela can dance. When I was minister, every year, we organize you to do. Sadawda will come. 
the speaker will come, all the ministers will come, and they will dance. If recently they have shown uh, Makisala and the president of France dancing, if the king of Mecca, who is entrusted with the custodian of the two holy mosques, they can dance, why not OJ? <laughs> I am telling you, this whole thing is about me. And I have understand it. Because OJ is a mask. Because <laughs> nobody, I cannot fit in anybody's pocket. That is me.